the anti-American party today is the Republican Party. Oh. They hate America. They want to destroy America. And the Republicans in Congress are low lives. Jim they Jordan, are, they Comer. They are scum. They are liars. And it, it, it's insulting to scum to say that they are scum. It's insulting to liars to say that they are liars. These are the worst people you could ever possibly imagine. And they have no morals whatsoever. They have no respect for truth. They have no respect for decency. These people are the worst of the worst. And, and, and Comer's just that not, not only is he scum, he is dumb. Yeah, dumb. he's dumb. He is the, he is, I mean, you just look at his eyes and you can just see through the back of his head. Hello, everyone, and welcome to George Conway Explains It All to Sarah. I'm Sarah Longwell, publisher of The Bulwark. And because I am not a lawyer, I have asked my good friend George Conway from the Society for the Rule of Law to explain the legal news to me every week, except last week, which we missed. And unfortunately, there was a ton of legal news while that happened. Uh -oh. uh, right? Yes. There was. Uh, I, I, well, I, but you still have your enthusiasm. I'm amazed that, you know. I, I do. You, yeah. I'm still happy. Well, I got to say, there was some good news on the legal front from my perspective. From your perspective? Trump was ordered to pay $465 million for business fraud. Uh, so that was good. Uh, That's a lot of money. You went to the Super Bowl. That was I did go thing to the happened. Super Bowl. Yeah, that didn't that didn't uh, cost that didn't for then that did not cost as much money. So just my first most important question was: Did you meet Taylor Swift? No. Okay. I almost could have if I had really some courage. Yeah. I could have met. If only you'd had the courage. If I'd only had the courage, I could yeah. have met Nancy Pelosi. She was oh, wow. standing by herself just, just at halftime. She had been deserted by I don't know who, but she was just standing there by herself, and I could have walked up to her and said, "Hi, ma'am, can I have your autograph or something?" But I was too afraid to. I feel like listeners of this podcast could potentially be more excited about the idea that you encountered Nancy Pelosi than Taylor Swift. Yeah, I, I'm. You know, it's probably a less hip crowd, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we also have special guests in the studio today. Your dogs, Bonnie and Clyde, are Bonnie here. Bonnie and Clyde are here. They're 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 good. They like. They like Sarah. I'm really impressed. Yeah, they I'm easy. Been, I'm nice. I'm yeah. good. To, I'm, I'm good. Like All right. Sarah. So let's talk about the $465 million. Uh, were you like, did that cause you joy? How, what, how, what, what were your feelings about it? I didn't have strong feelings about it other than it was a long time coming. Um, it didn't cause me any, it didn't move my emotional needle. Okay, great. Uh, well, we're going to get into that that's a little bit more. That's not particularly exciting. No, that's no, okay. We'll I mean, talk about you know, it more. Fraud is fraud. We, fraud is boring compared to... I don't think... I disagree with this, and I'm going to tell you why. But listen, I'm glad we started this podcast yeah. because I can't believe how much... We took like one week off because yeah. uh, we both had just conflicts, and right. then like all this stuff happened. Right. So I want to cover four things today. Four things. Are Good. you ready? That means I don't have to know very much about any one of them. That's right. <laughs> I want to quickly touch on the Fonnie Willis stuff. Oh, uh, don't, don't, and, get me, don't get me started. Right? Okay. Well, we're going to get started on all this. That's what the podcast is about. Oh, uh, then I want to talk about the verdict in the Trump organization, the business fraud case. And then I want to dig deeper. This is my personal pet hobby horse right now mm -hmm. on the Alexander Smirnov uh, this like double agent who uh, it turns out he's lying and the, is he related to Yakov Smirnoff? I don't know. I just keep wanting to or pronounce Smirnoff it Ica? like Smirnoff Ice. You know? Yeah. What's have you ever gotten iced before? No, but I mean, I just remember it was shitty vodka when I was a yeah. When I was shit. in my like t t late twenties, there was a trend where if somebody like gave you a bottle of Smirnoff yeah. Ice, you had to chug it right then. It was like a weird game that people sometimes they put it in your drawer. And if you found it, like, you said, get on one knee right then and chug it. Yeah. So I have I bad associations with it. I was always about vodka, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I want to wrap up, though, by looking ahead to the New York election interference case, which is the hush money case against Trump, uh, because oh, it got like set for trial. Calling, I like the way everybody's calling it the election interference case. Yeah. That's the, that's the new it framing the on this. It was the first election interference case. It was the first of many. All right. But let's start with the circus down in Georgia, because I ended up watching this live. And I, I refused had, to. Okay, well, I was just, I, I don't know, I had the TV on when this very dramatic thing happened where Fonnie Willis just kind of walks into the courtroom uh, and then they took it live, but like they had sort of the, they had the video of her doing this. Um, and so just to back up, okay, uh, this is the Fulton County District Attorney, yes. Fonnie Willis. She brought the election interference RICO case against Trump and a bunch of his buddies. But it turns out she was romantically involved with a guy yes. whom she had hired to be the special prosecutor yes. in the case. 
And there's an open question whether they started dating before or after she hired him. They've taken vacations together, but again, it's an open question whether Wade paid for the trips from his Trump prosecution earnings or whether she paid him back. That seemed to be the crux of the questioning that I was watching. But because of all of this, one of the defendants filed a motion asking that Willis, Wade, and the entire DA's office down there in Georgia be disqualified from prosecuting Trump. And just to be clear, this is the case where he asked Brad Raffensperger to go find 11,000 um, votes. Yeah, 11,000 yada yada votes. Uh-huh. So the, then during the hearing uh, last week, right, so Willis, she comes in, she, she takes the stand. It was it's broadcasted, broadcast live. And I know some people think she did a good job defending herself. But I will tell you just from my perspective, as I was watching it, I sat there like this. Oh, no, 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 no. See, that's why I refuse to watch it. Uh, and and I, I when you when people clip it like they do on Twitter, there's you know, she had sort of some zingers in response. But I just thought. For such an important case, it wasn't even that I disagreed with maybe some of the explanations she was giving. She was just, she came in hot. I thought, man, this is, seems like a train wreck. That is, but people are, have a split, they're split on it. But what do you think? Oh, I hate everybody. Okay. That, so that's my position on this one is everybody is ridiculous and I can't stand this whole show. And it starts with her. Um... I don't know what she was thinking. I also don't know what he was thinking. I also know that it doesn't matter one whit at all to the prosecution, that there's no basis for recusal. And the judge letting this happen, I'm mad at him too. So I'm just mad at everybody. And I can unpack all of that, I guess. Can I unpack I a little bit of it? Yeah. So when you say, so let's just start with, it's it's not an affair. Like they're just like both adults who are single. Right? There's no problem with the relationship as a, as a, as a pa matter of just two adults, consenting yeah. adults. I think from a standpoint of running a, um, a public organization or any form of organization, that's it's bad because we, you know, I think we've established by the year 2024 that you shouldn't really have affairs with underlings or people in in the in in your office unless so there is some a kind of question though on this yes what is the what's what is the relationship like so she is well, the relationship she, apparently boss, was or? the relationship apparently okay th this is a this is and this this brings in another screwy aspect of what happened here which is something that happens in georgia prosecutors can hire private counsel to be prosecutors and pay them an hourly rate that is maybe not the hourly rate that they would get in private practice necessarily, but a pretty substantial uh, rate such that you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, a year working in a prosecutor's office, even though you are not actually a employee, you know, you're more like a contractor or something. I don't know what it is. And so the, the DA's office was able to hire him and he gets to bill by the hour, not as a salaried employee, but he bills by, by the hour. And that is sort of the one source of how this happened. Now, it's it's totally lawful in Georgia, apparently. Now, the problem here is she hired this guy, and then she later started, I guess, sleeping with him. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that from a legal standpoint. It's no business of anybody else's other than the taxpayers to the extent that, you know, this isn't this isn't this isn't the way you should run a public prosecutor's office, but it's got nothing to do. It shouldn't create any rights in any of the defendants because it has nothing to do with their guilt or innocence. It has nothing to do um, with their being prosecuted. It, has no un it visits no unfairness upon them to the, to the point that they had to actually just make up in order to bring this into court and make an issue What are they it. making it? And what, are they, what they were making up was, the, was a, they were made up a suggestion that somehow her hiring him was this way of getting him to funnel her money through these through vacations and trips and dinners. And that created an incentive them to, for them to prosecute as many people as possible so that he could run up the tab and benefit her. Okay. And there's just no evidence of that. Just no, not, not a this shred of evidence. This is why the bulk of the questioning that I was watching was focused on this idea of he, they went on these vacations and then they were asking how she reimbursed him because right. that's her response, right. right? Is that she reimbursed right. uh, for these trips. She paid him back <coughs> and that the but, problem is though she doesn't have transactional proof of that because she's saying she paid it all in cash. Right, which 
I, you know, I don't think that's unreasonable to believe, but I don't think, you know, I, I just don't believe for an instant that she hired this guy um, in order to enrich herself. Yeah. It, it's just, it's just ludicrous. She had, she had mixed motives to be sure. She had, she thought he was a good lawyer. I mean, people have just said, well, you know, he's not really a criminal He's not really a prosecutor, but he's a good he's a good lawyer, a good complex litigator, and he's done criminal defense work. He's perfectly he, he's obviously perfectly capable, and the work that they put out is pretty good. So it, you know there just really isn't an issue here. But the problem was the judge just let. And that, so that's the next one. Does the judge does what he let? When the he judge let just, him do the it. The judge just basically just let the the the, the process the, not the um the, the defense counsel just run wild with all this stuff. I mean, you could have easily seen the judge doing something like, all right, you got to come up a little more than this, or I'm not going to let you ask all these crazy questions. Or he, he could have contained the questioning to some extent, and clearly he did not. He chose not to, and it may well be that it be, it's because he is afraid of getting reversed because it's the one, you know, the one thing, you, the prosecutors are never going to get you reversed. The people who are going to get you reversed are defense lawyers. So it may well be that his thinking was, I just have to let the defense have their you know, ha- have their fun on this one so that nobody can, can challenge me after. But it just, I mean, it was just so, it, it just created such an unnecessary and pointless spectacle that I just found the whole thing offensive. And I found basically everybody, I, I, I'm bl- I blame everybody. That's why I say I hate everybody on this one. I think she, she did not conduct herself well. I don't think he conducted himself well. I, I mean, it was just, I mean, talk about, you, you've got the most contentious, criminal prosecution you will ever have and you open yourself up to this it's like god i mean find somebody else what about her taking the stand because i mean the part that was pretty wild was like she walked into the courtroom and was like no i want to get up there and there was a little bit of back and forth and then she just took the stand and you could see the lawyer the tv lawyers were going they were doing what i was doing like oh no 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 why is she doing this I think she was doing it for for political reasons. I think she was getting beaten up politically, and I think she felt she needed to defend herself. And I can't I can't necessarily blame her for that decision. I, th- I you can debate whether or not she went in too hot or not. I think think she did have a right to be offended to some extent. It's a lot of the uh, implications that were being made. Although she she kind of bought this ticket, so I, I I have a lot of mixed feelings about it. So I mean, it's one of these things where. A lot of different things can be true at yeah, once. Yeah. Okay, there is no. I mean, the motion was baloney. I'm going to. I was going to use the word BS again, but you guys keep bleeping me. <laughs> Barry um, has very sensitive yeah, ears. It's very sensitive ears. Um, the motion was hogwash. It was mendacious. On the other hand, her conduct was not was not was far from ideal, and the judge didn't conduct the proceedings. I think with sufficient dignity or um, discipline, I think, uh, in a way that I think the court should have. And I, I, just, I just, it's just a lot of different, and, and, and some, people, some people are saying, oh, well, this is, just, this is just an example of racism. I have no doubt that there isn't a racial aspect of this pol- pol- from the political standpoint and, and from, the, from the standpoint of these Trumpers. Um, on the other hand, they would have done this to anybody. They were gonna pull this stunt once they had something to pull. And, and so, you know, just a lot of different things uh, are are true all at once, and 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 I, you know, there's just plenty of blame to go around, and hopefully this judge gets it right, and there's no basis to, there's just no basis that I can see to recuse, um, and the problem though is that if there is a recusal, the recusal is office wide. That for some reason under Georgia law, it wouldn't be enough. You couldn't <laughs> just find a substitute. Um, assi- assistant district attorney to serve as the DA of Fulton County for purposes of this one case, which is what would happen in a U.S. attorney's office. Um, the recusal means that nobody who works in that office who is employed by the Fulton County district attorney's office could participate in the prosecution, which basically would shut it down. Yeah. Because you'd have to find another county, another DA, and you know that's not going to happen. So I know that this case is uh, a big one and that what Fonnie Willis did by taking the stand really broke through because I asked a focus group about it of California Democrats uh, just this week. And I want to play for you what they had to say when we asked. And let me just tell you, a lot of times when you ask about the legal stuff, people are like, what? 
Uh, like yeah. you asked about the specifics, but let's listen to how these voters uh, answered. Are you guys worried that this will hurt the credibility of her case against Trump? Yeah. Absolutely. It's clearly okay. strong why they're going after her. So it, it's proving yeah. itself. That's the whole yeah. point. You don't worry about something that's not greasy. That wheel doesn't get attention unless it's greasy. Bob, your perception of it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Derek. It's the perception of it. That's why they're going after her. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not worried about the case. I'm worried about her her being taken off the case, which would kill the case. But as far as the the case itself, it hasn't really made a difference. So let me tell you, for, that's those a, are perfectly sensible reactions, right? right. I, but I, I they basically had your reaction, right. which is uh, they are going after her. The going after her is politically motivated. Yeah. Uh, but and but this is about the perception right. of of this case. But the fear is, is that it could work and she could get taken off of it because, as you just noted, if if that resets the whole case, like right. it's over right. if, it's if a, they look, get pulled I, I off see of why it. The, I, mean, I understand why the Trump lawyers made the motion because it's a it's a it's just a, it was a, it's a small percentage chance at it's a like huge a finger victory. hold. It's something to grab onto. It's something to grab onto, and you know, it's like you you put a little. It's just, just putting a little money on that chip. It doesn't cost very much, and if, if it pays off, it's pay off. It's going to pay off big. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I on that level, I mean, the mendacity I can't take, I can't, I can't defend, but I do understand tactically why they'd want to take a shot at, at this. All right, let's 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 turn to this uh, Trump organization verdict. Yes. Uh, happy happier stuff. Um, so many people are saying. Many people are saying. So this is no one the, has ever had such a verdict. This many is the, people. The New York Trump organization. What an incredible verdict you have. Case. Yeah. Uh, so. He has to pay three hundred and fifty-five million plus another hundred or million or so in interest. Yes, prejudgment interest. New, uh, York, New York law, nine percent from the time of the offense. Didn't know about that. This interest—that's a lot of money in interest. You know, nine nine percent is really—you know—you can't. Where, where are you going to get nine percent? Madoff. I don't mean you probably even couldn't even got it from Madoff. Uh, so, and he also can't apply for any New York loans for three years, yeah. which is a problem from a, from a New York registered bank. Yeah. Uh, and he can't serve as an officer or director of any New York corporation for three years. Bummer. Uh, all right, so tell me. But he can me, be just, president of the United States. He can't be president of the United States. All right, so hit me with just. Uh, I know it didn't. You said it didn't move, move the emotional needle, but what about just from a legal standpoint? Were you surprised by the size no, of the judgment? No, no, no. I mean, I think this this has been a long time coming. I think that. Um, I mean, one of the the worst things that happened actually to Donald Trump, ironically was that this entire investigation, which was originally a criminal investigation, um, spearheaded by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, um, by those two gentlemen, uh, uh, Kerry Dunn and Mark Pomerantz, it was originally, this was, all this stuff was originally a criminal investigation, which would have required them to prove um, everything beyond a reasonable doubt. And what happened was because Alvin Bragg dropped the criminal piece of it, then the parallel piece of it um, became the more important piece, which is the civil case. And the civil case was always easier to prove because you have a lower burden of proof and the documents on their face prove the case. The doc basically, they're maintaining multiple sets of books to, to, to oversimplify it. And, and he, he, they just made up numbers for the books, to the point where the accountants wouldn't even stand, stand up behind them and the accountants later resigned. So there was not really much for the DA's office to, to prove beyond the documents, other than that the documents were is intentionally issued. And, that they, and, and so from the very beginning, um, it was clear that he was going to be held liable and the only question is is is, is of the damages and the only real argument they have that the, the trump lawyers have about this case is that no one they, they argue no one was harmed yeah. no one was harmed because people got repaid the loans got repaid no one believes us anyway <laughs> you know everybody knows we're lying that kind of defense and um but that's not that's not what this case was about. This case is about the fact that if you register to do business in the state of New York and you keep books and records under New York state law because you're 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 registered to do business or you have a New York LLP or whatever, um, you are required to keep accurate books and records because there may be a time when people will come and look at them. 
and rely on them, whether that be tax authorities, banks, insurance companies, auditors, anybody. And to basically um, conduct your business as if none of that mattered and to, and to run it as just, you know, you're on, on, on false numbers all the way down the line in almost everything you do, um, no, is illegal. And it may be that there are a lot of private companies in New York that do this in the real estate business or otherwise. I don't know. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a basis for liability. And, and, and it's, a, it's, you know, it, 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 the question is how do you calculate the damages? And, and I guess you calculate the damages on the basis of how much business you're conducting using these books. Um, not necessarily, you know, because there's not a fraud measure of liability in terms of, a, of somebody being um, losing money. Um, but there was, you know, you, 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 he's been doing this for years, endlessly. And that's why the numbers are so large. So the other argument that I saw people making was that this would have never been brought against Trump had he not been president. Well, uh, you know, if you are a criminal, and you step into the public limelight, people are going to start investigating. I you. should tweet that. That uh, is such I, I a mean, good I, point. I, I, it's, if it's, you're a criminal and you step into the public limelight, you right. could expect this that is people why, will know This is that why you're if you're a criminal, it's better not to go into politics. Yeah, right. I mean, it's just, it, you, you subject your, everyone who goes and puts, presents themselves to the public in some fashion, particularly if they're, you know, running for president, you're open, you open yourself up to scrutiny. And the fact that this man could not survive that scrutiny is frankly not the government's fault. It's like, you, you're just like, oh, hey, investigate me. Right? <laughs> it's, it, it's everything that this guy has done was put under a spotlight. But that's because he chose, not anyone else, he chose to make himself a, 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 a public candidate and a public official. That is a that's a that's a great point. That's a great point. I'm gonna. Uh, we I, should, I, we should I, cut. I, why, why why are you telling me it's a great point? It's like the most obvious thing. You in know the world. what's funny is sometimes like, that's the hardest for, part. Hey, don't run, guys. If you are a criminal doing crimey things, don't run for public office. <laughs> don't go on TV. Don't. It's bad. It's a bad idea. You know why? Because on its face, so obviously that is a good and obvious point. The, the, the corollary, though, is that it also, it feels obvious to be like, yeah, he is under more scrutiny because uh, of his presidency. And so like, was Joe Biden. Right, that's right. And, like, and so, the, was, so, was, so, so was Barack Obama. So was everybody. Yes. Uh, okay? It's just that this guy happens to be a criminal and a rapist and everything bad under the sun that you could possibly imagine. And then he plays the victim. It's like, no, that's not, that's not how this should work. So I'm surprised you got no joy out of it because I did say the judge did write the complete lack of contrition and remorse borders on pathological. And I know how much you like to borders on. Well, I knew you were going to say that borders that it, that, on. Yeah, right. Oh, oh, judge, judge, judge. I, you know, I, I <laughs> beg to differ. Borders on doing some work there. Um, <laughs> Heavy lifting for borders on. Borders so listen, on. a listener named Doug wrote in to ask how Trump. Hi, Doug. Yeah, how will Trump be able to pay all the legal fees and judgments? Obviously, his PAC has paid legal fees. Can it help pay the judgment in his case and the E. Jean Carroll case too? Or is he going to declare bankruptcy to avoid paying? Uh, th this is the 355 or 450 yeah. whatever million dollar question. Um, I don't know that he can use it to, to, to the, these PACs to pay off. The, the judgment, not only because it doesn't strike me as particular, particularly kosher, but I defer to campaign finance experts of which this town, in which the, of which there, there are thousands in this yeah, town. We're lousy with them. Oh uh, yeah, and um, on the other hand, I, he, the money isn't there for that because he's already been spending it on legal fees and and whatnot. Um, does he have the cash? He claims to have the cash. Alina Haba says he's got the cash, but he's, does he really have? 400, and remember, this is 450 million on top of the 88.3, 83.3 million. We're up to about a half a bill here. Yeah, no, no, we're up to half a billion dollars. I mean, it's like, it would be kind of, for a leveraged real estate guy, it would make no sense to have that level of cash sitting around. Okay, that doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it just uneconomical to have that level of cash not doing something. Yeah. Um, it's a heck and of then a the and, then, and, and he's a, right, and he's a, <laughs> yeah, and um, he's a, um, 
and and he's in the real estate business. Stuff you know, it's not like he's in the securities business where you can sell stuff quick. on the open market really quick. And any and anything to any time you sell that much of anything that quickly, you're gonna take a bath. So the question is, I don't know how he's going to. I don't know how this is going to happen. I mean, the the way these rules work in terms of judgments. I mean, in the federal court, it's thirty days after the entry of the formal judgment, which ha in the Eugene Carroll case happened on, I think it was February eighth. Thirty days. He he's got to either come up with a bond or put the money, deposit the money with the court in order to be able to take to to not to suspend collection efforts. If he does not do that, he can still appeal, but that would mean that E. Jean Carroll and her lawyers could run around town or Florida or wherever trying to attach assets that belong to him directly or indirectly, whether it be bank accounts, real estate, anything. And I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know the complexities of doing that. You have to figure out um, how these things are titled and so on and so forth. It's complicated, but it's a big nuisance for, a, for somebody to have, you know, be chased around town for money. But you think he can't? Not, I mean, I made the GoFundMe I, 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 joke, I, I, but like, I, I, you think he can he raise it from uh, these poor, unsuspecting? I don't think he can raise it from these poor, unsuspecting people. I think they're tapped out, yeah. first of all. Um, but like, and, if he could, if could he, he pay could, it with that? I, I don't know that he could. Oh, did you see? Did you see um, Lara Trump there? They're asking her about that on TV. They said, "Hey, yeah. do you think that you think do you think people want to help pay for that judgment?" Because oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, every dollar will go to Trump from the RNC. I will. I will say, uh, Lara, you may know that the RNC is in charge of electing all the Republicans, right? right? Not just not just the one, not just your what father-in-law. Uh, no, it's totally become. A corrupt. Uh, it's a corrupt enterprise. piggy bank yeah. for him, and I, the fact that he's just installing his family so, members right. like no, it's this it's is just this a is, mafia. This is it's a mafia. It's a, it's exactly like if you talk to a Ruth Ben Giat, <laughs> yeah. an expert in in authoritarianism. This is what happens. The families, you know, the the the, the, the corrupt leaders' families end up controlling a lots of things, um, and and here they're controlling an entire political party and its fundraising and so on and so forth. Uh, but to go back to the question of, I, I don't know where he's going to get $500 million. Maybe he has it. Maybe he has it in cash. Maybe Alina Haba and Donald Trump are telling the truth, and he really has all these liquid assets, in which case he'll, he'll have to till deposit them to the court, uh, into the court, or he, can, or he can get a bond. But I don't think he's going to be able to get a bond. I don't think, you know, real estate isn't particularly good for getting a bond. For, so, uh, who's going to, who's, the, the, the problem is the people who are, Issuing the bond are the ones who ultimately get charged with having to collect against Donald yeah. Trump. You want to do that? I do not. No. I'm not sure he's good for it. He's not good for it. And him declaring bankruptcy, which seems like well, how he's gotten out of these jams in the past, optically, that's not great for that's him. That's not great. And that's the interesting, but that, that's that's interesting. Um, David K. Johnston, a, a very um, a former New York Times reporter who has been writing about um, Donald Trump's taxes and finances for a very long time, um, issued some kind of a... a I, I guess it was, I, I, maybe it was a Substack. I don't remember, but it was some kind of an article where he said, um, look for Donald Trump possibly to file for personal bankruptcy. And, and that is one way, I mean, it is a very common way that judgment debtors, common method for judgment debtors to use to stave off collection efforts when they can't post the bond. Um, in the corporate, you see it in the corporate environs. I mean, I, I, dating myself, but once upon a time, there was this Pennzoil Texaco litigation in the 80s, and it, it produced one of the biggest, the biggest judgment anybody had ever seen up until that point of $11.53 billion, 8.53 plus 3 billion in punitives. It was for a breach of a merger agreement. And Texaco um, ultimately had to declare bankruptcy so that it could, it could pursue its appeal, so that it could, it could basically function as a continuing business while it tried to challenge the appeal, which it ultimately settled. Um, Donald Trump has done this in the past, but only corporate bankruptcies. This would be a personal bankruptcy mm. because the judgments, the judgments that are at issue here, the, uh, both for the, the rape and defamation and for fraud, are against him personally. Mm. So it's it's it, it's a bit different, but it would have the same effect. It would stave off efforts to collect pending appeal. Now the problem is. Personal bankruptcy for him. It's one thing for him to take his companies through bankruptcy um, because he can just say, oh, I'm just being a smart business. I mean, this goes straight to him. This is him personally. And it's just, 
he's basically saying, I don't have this money. And he, you know, that, that's much more narcissist from, an, from the standpoint of this narcissistic sociopath, that's a much deeper, uh, uh, chewier pill to swallow than, than any other he could possibly. But on the other hand, I don't think it's, I think he's got to figure out some way to stave off the collection efforts or else basically we're going to watch in real time as, as you know, properties um, of his direct, that he owns directly and directly and, and, and get attached and, and, and liens get put on them. I don't know how. Fire I, sale. Fire sale on Trump properties, so I don't know. guys. I mean, it, I, it, would not, it would not surprise me if he declared personal bankruptcy by the end of the month. It, would surprise, it wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't. I just don't know what he's going to do. Okay. Well, while we wait for Donald Trump to make that decision, I actually want to talk about something slightly different than just the regular court cases because I'm hot on this one. I want to talk about Alexander Smirnov. Okay. okay? Again. Vodka. Mentioned this earlier. Okay. Right. Vodka. Vodka. I do not understand how this is not getting more coverage. Uh, now, just hold on. I'm going to set this thing up. Like, okay. Just so for background, in August, Merrick Garland appointed David Weiss as special counsel to investigate all the Hunter Biden stuff, right? Right. Before that, Trump had appointed Weiss to be uh, the U.S. attorney for Delaware. Right. So last week, as a part of Weiss's investigation, a federal dr- grand jury indicted a guy named Alexander Smirnov, who was a former FBI informant, for lying about the Biden's dealings with Ukraine. Not only was he lying, but he got those lies from Russian spies. Now, the prosecutors... Duh. What? Duh. 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 I thought duh. you said duh. Duh. <laughs> duh. Uh, but also duh. So the prosecutors asked that Smirnov be detained pending trial because he's also an Israeli citizen and he could flee the country. But the judge released him from custody and ordered that he wear an ankle monitor, among other restrictions, which I want to ask you about because I do not understand. I read this whole thing. I read the whole document. I do not understand why this judge let him walk. So meanwhile, House Republicans have been leaning on Smirnov's allegations in their impeachment inquiry into Biden. He was like very important to them. When the other special counsel, Robert Hur, dropped his report, which included jabs about Biden's age, my phone rang off the hook with reporters who want to know, like, oh, what do voters think about Biden's age and does this problem for him? But the Smirnoff stuff this week, hey, I mean, I'm not hearing from reporters about it, but like, there's just like not, I mean, it was like on A16 of the New York Times, uh, even though that we know that members of Congress have been parroting the talking points of these Russian intelligence agents right. who were giving him this stuff. So just like, well, what, you know, man, it, what it, is it, happening it, here? What is happening is a standard thing. It's, it's standard operating procedure of the media environment in the Trump era, which is we know the Trump people and everyone associated with them and their, their supporters in Congress, they are bad people. Yeah. When they do bad things, we expect them. This We're not shocked by them. When you know somebody who is not so bad does something that's not perfect, that becomes a story. And then and that's just basically Donald Trump has defined um, the TV level and C down. To, absolutely. Yeah. And that's basically what's happened here. You have, you know, th- these people in, in, in Congress are just low lives. They are, they are the, the Republicans in Congress are low lives. Jim they Jordan, are, they Comer. are scum. They are liars. And you know, it's not just uh, Congress. Like again, because I was watching Jim Jordan do this. Manu Raju no. is asking him, and he's like, "Well, the facts still remain." But like the, the facts. No, no, no. This, Fox, was, this was number one. This was your number one fact. This was, was this the guy? big fact, and yes. not not just that. I mean, the number of times Sean Hannity and Fox News. Mm-hmm. That they talked about was it ten thirty two? Is that what this is? Is that the uh, uh, there's some there's some name the document the for the document ten thirty two? Yeah, and so right, they right. they talked about how this was a this very was this, F, this important informant blah 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 the very you know credible says informant. right right. Uh, this guy was like I, I mean so he is has an FBI handler but also is getting so I guess right. that makes him a double agent if he's also getting intelligence from Russian yeah, spies. Yeah, which that is he's a problem. Delivering. Which is a, which is a problem when you're when you're doing this kind of work that you have is you don't know whether these people are spinning you or they're working for somebody else at the same time. They may be spinning the other team. They you know, and that's that's the reason why this is considered to be raw intelligence data. Yeah. And that's why you just don't you just don't necessarily credit everything. You look at it and then you try to figure out whether it makes any sense or not, whether you can verify it or not. But these people took it because well, it, this is it. The FBI was telling the right. Republicans in Congress, Correct. we cannot verify right. this. In fact, we're not sure it's credible at all. Right. Ken and Buck, Ken Buck on went them. on television yesterday. Yeah. I think he went on last night with, with Caitlin with Collins with Caitlin, and yeah. basically said, yeah, we were told that this, you, you, you know, be careful with this stuff. You know, they're entitled to get to see the raw stuff, but, but, but you know, you can't, it, a lot of it's unvetted. 
And then they ran with but, it. I mean, funny, it's the, the same people who complain about the, oh, the leaking of the, of the, the, of the steel dossier. It's like, yeah, well, that's, you know, people write down stuff that they hear that's, and, and, and sometimes somebody's, who, the person who's writing it down is lying or somebody is lying to the person who's writing it down or lying to the person who's told the person who, who then wrote it down. It's like, you know, you, you, you have to actually investigate. That's what investigations are for. And, but these people didn't care, and they still don't care. Now they're, now they're saying they, they ignore the fact that they were told that this stuff may not be reliable, and now they're saying they didn't rely on it, even though this is what they were waving around for yeah. all these months. And yeah, it, it, the problem with it is it's like, oh, it's not news that these people are scum, yeah. that Jim Jordan is scum and that Comer is scum. And, and Comer's just that not, not only is he scum, he is dumb. Yeah, dumb. he's dumb. He is the he is. I mean, you just look at his eyes, and you can just see through the back of his head. Um, it's, it's just. I was it's listening just, to him on TV the other day, and I actually he, had he, the same thought. I was like, I cannot believe you are the guy. No, literally, literally, right you now. can see the light. You can see the light shining through the back of his yeah. head. It's just, it's just incredible. And the, these, and these people just won't. Then they, they just, they just flip, and they just. Oh, we, we weren't relying on that, and it, it doesn't like you could show them tape yeah. of them relying on it. Yeah. These people are scum. Sometimes I think that maybe Dems don't even understand this the way people who are Republicans are because we were raised on Cold War Reaganism about sure. Russia. The idea that a Republican president would stand on the stage with Vladimir Putin and side against America's intelligence community is un is unthinkable. The idea that the Republican Party in Congress would be relying to impeach an American president on raw intelligence uh, from provided by Russian spies in order to impeach, mm. right? The idea that they would celebrate one of their biggest uh, so-called journalists like Tucker Carlson right. going and parroting Russian propaganda and talking about how their grocery stores are great. Like this is, this is, you couldn't even make up no. a spy novel in which a Republican president and Congress no, when, when we were grew colluding up, when we with grew the Russians. Up, when we grew up, the Democrats were the anti-American party. That's right. They were like, oh, America has failed this. America is doing this badly. And America is like, and the fact of the matter is the anti-American party today is the Republican Party. They hate America. They want to destroy America. And they want to destroy it because they don't like that they're not in charge of it. And they want to see every its institutions brought to heel. And so lying, using you losing uh, Soviet, uh, no, Russian propaganda, all good, mm. all good, and that's that's where we are today, and that's why they that's why they they want to pull the plug on Ukraine. They they want they want they want to see this country laid low because they hate it. Yeah, and can I just the the thing about Ukraine is when you when you think about all of this stuff together, when you think about Trump leveraging Vladimir Zelensky in that perfect yeah. uh, phone call right. that he, which is which is his first impeachment. Right. right? Remember, he was withholding weapons right. and aid to them right. so that they would dig up dirt on right. Joe Biden. Right. Like the, the, the Russian and fingerprints. It was, uh, but stuff, it was also but all, right. And it was also on the basis he believed he was fed all this nonsense for years, Trump was, that the, the Ukrainians had conspired against him to, 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 to beat him and to spread bad information mm -hmm. about him. I mean, that and the was, Russians helped him, the, and you know right. the only thing for Trump, the only thing that Trump cares who's, about is who's helps me, who's and helps who's, right. him, who's good for him, right. and so he is fine. I like that's why he always says I like Putin. Putin likes me, and it's still true. And what what is what just blows my mind is how it's all happening in broad daylight. It's all happening in broad daylight, and and again, I mean this goes to the the to the, the to the psychopathy of it. It's like Putin is a murderer. Yeah. He's a killer. He doesn't even pretend to be anything but that today. And like we just saw we him just murder saw Navalny. We just saw him murder Navalny, and you don't hear you don't hear the you don't hear the Kremlin saying, "Oh, we didn't do this." I know. Yeah, right? they didn't do right. this. Where's the body? Huh? Body? What body? You know. <laughs> Nor do you hear Republic Trump right. doesn't condemn it. No. In fact, all he's done now is he, he wants he, to be. It's like I am Navalny. I'm Navalny. Yeah. They, no. Right. It's it, it's sick. It is sick, and 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 it's sick. That's it. Basically, is sick. Okay, I just needed to. I just wanted. Okay. To, needed, I needed to talk about that one. Yes. Um, okay. Before we wrap up, I want to look ahead at the Trump criminal trial calendar because everyone had been hoping, including us, we've talked about it on the podcast that the January sixth case would be the first trial because it's the most serious. But because of all the immunity litigation in that case, it's probably not going to trial until this summer at the earliest. 
And obviously, we will talk about the Supreme Court and the immunity case in future episodes. But last week, the judge in the New York election interference case, otherwise known as the Stormy Daniels hush money case, scheduled the trial to start March 25th, which means that case is going to go to trial first. And I've gathered that a lot of folks are not thrilled about that. I'm not thrilled about that. But why don't you tell us why people aren't thrilled about it? I guess people aren't thrilled about it because it just looks trivial compared to trying to overthrow the Constitution of the United States. And that's not an incorrect thing. But what he did there was still a crime. It was a crime under federal and state law. The uh, U.S. Attorney's Office of the Southern District of New York identified it as a crime when they charged and took a guilty plea from Michael Cohen. I mean, it was a violation of U.S. federal campaign finance law. It, it, was, it was illegal in any number of respects, and it was a fraud on the American people. It's a, it, it, this is, I mean, the reason why it looks so trivial is because, you know, you have, it, it's so absurd. You have Trump paying $130 million to a porn star with- It with, wasn't $130 million, was it? Uh, $130, i am sorry, $130,000. <laughs> yeah, million, million, yeah, pretty soon you're talking real money, $130,000 to this, to the, to the, to the, to this character, and who's actually smarter than he is. And um, it, it just, it's just embarrassingly stupid. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, it's a crime. It should have been charged a long time ago. And um, it's sort of fitting, right? That, that the first thing, that the, that the first conviction will be for something so perfectly stupid that it only Donald Trump could have gotten himself into it. Yeah. So I, I don't look at it in a negative way as some other people do. I, there's just a sort of a fitting absurdity and embarrassment to him. To it, it's so going to be so embarrassing for him. It's perfect. It's delicious. He deserves this. So, I, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't get upset that this is the first case um, it, it, I, at, at all. I mean, I actually, you know, I mean, ideally, in the in, in the perfect world, that Mar-a-Lago classified documents case, which is cut and dried, open and shut, should have been tried months ago and should still be tried. Um, but, you know, he'll get his day in court on all of these things, and he's going to go down on, on more than one of these things. And, and I just – we just have to be patient. Uh, yeah, so for me, sort of your, like, the full circle poetic Yeah, there's a poetic justice. It, there's that, a that, poetic justice. I don't – I that doesn't satisfy me because I need him to be um, – I, I I want it. I want the severity of what he's done. Like the problem with the Stormy. Let me tell you one of the reasons I hate the Stormy Daniels thing. I just I'll tell you why I take the mm. opposite side. Whenever so we were talking about these old guys, right? Yeah. Do you you think it's embarrassing for him? I bet he loves no, he being talk talking about his uh, stuff with porn stars. It makes him. I think he probably thinks it makes him sound virile. It makes no. uh, it makes the the sort of barstool sports bros who are already pro Trump nah. like him. I think I nah. think yes. I think it, it yeah. makes I think it is a thing that He's makes him a seem sucker. Not old. He paid one hundred and thirty thousand dollars to this woman and she didn't stay hushed. Mm, I don't he know, looks man. like a fool. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to work. Oh, we're gonna have to, you're gonna have to work to make that framing stick because I don't think that's how. I think I've, people just think it's stupid. Like oh yeah, he, like. They think he's he gets away with it because he's a celebrity. He gets away with it because he's yeah. never been faithful to anybody. Because I mean, the Epstein stuff mm. doesn't stick to him. Like nothing sticks to him because he's so bad. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, that's 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 the fact. I just think the Jan- I mean, not the even January six, not even January six sticks to him if you if you really want to get right down to it because some people just are un- just unwilling to. Un- unwilling to accept the truth. So it doesn't stick to him with lots of people. I think it. I think unlike the Stormy Daniels case, which I don't think swing voters are going to care about one bit because it has no impact on their lives or their country. Okay, but but what, what's going to happen January is what, what happens does. when he gets a, when he gets a. Yes, I agree with that. I agree that I agree that that the January sixth case is more impactful. But this one could also send him to jail, and he's going to be. You know, he this could also make him a convicted felon. I, can and it make so it, I'm not. He, I'm he not going to be a convicted I, felon and not go to jail, right? He could be. I mean, he could. He could. I mean, it's possible the judge could decide just to fine him. I. I. I haven't looked at the New York sentencing. Um, you know, the sentencing. Dude, if analysis he goes to here, jail over the Stormy Daniels thing, he's going to go to jail. Uh, my view is he's going to go to jail for a bunch of different things. Okay, I think you know, as I've said before, any 
any random combination of the 91 counts could put him in jail for the rest of his life. Okay. Well, I think we're going to end with uh, your optimism about Trump going to jail, which, uh, for the record, I'm not sure I share, but I like... Uh, I like your perspective on it. Okay, because we had so much to catch up on, we didn't have as much time for listener questions today, but we love hearing from you guys, so keep emailing us at AskGeorge. That's one word, AskGeorge at thebulwark.com. Thank you for listening to George Conway Explains It All to Sarah. I'm Sarah Longwell. Don't forget to hit subscribe, leave us a review on your podcast app, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.